Hey guys, today I just got back from the movies. It was really fun. And luckily it's not either a Monday or Thursday and I don't have six o'clock meetings. Lucky for me. Uh, so today I'm going to go over seven cards that have recently spiked in price. And I'm going to do this new video segment where I just logically look at it. I'm not going to look at the decks. So I'm not going to look at what people are saying about the card and why it's going up. I'm just going to draw logical conclusions based on my Magic the Gathering finance experience and you can let me know if I'm correct or incorrect and it's going to be kind of fun. So Dark Maul Goal is an uncommon from starter 1999. That is 18 years ago. So good things about the card, it is very old and there's not that many copies of it. So it is a uncommon that was until recently around $2.28. Actually on March 7th, it was at the all time low. So what does it do? Two double black, it's a uncommon zombie. Whenever it enters the battlefield and whenever it enters play, target opponent loses two life, you gain two life, it is a two two. Now, why I might believe this card has spiked is we are in Amaket, which is a zombie set. Assuming someone has Recursion, meaning this is going to be EDH card. I don't see this being breakable in Legacy, mainly because it has existed for 18 years and no one's played it in Legacy. And to my knowledge, this is the only edition, so it's not eligible in Modern. So that leaves only EDH. I'm sure there is some infinite zombie combo with recursions of zombies and this one is much better than having to attack with your zombies. Most zombies come and play on are tapped when they are come back from the graveyard. This one however does the two damage. So very much like tendrils of agony. This is probably one of the win cons. That would be my best guess. Very low supply, very old card and probably has a win con. Condemn, we've talked about this again. Uh, Condemn is, Wizards of the Coast actually said this. Condemn is the solution to the tier one death shadow decks. That's what Wizards of the Coast said. And yes, situational, you can have a circumstance where you knock out two death shadows with this because you make your opponent gain so much life that it kills the other death shadow. Uh, the interesting part about why this card is so expensive is you have the 10th edition, you have the commander edition, I know you cannot see here, but the dissension edition is the original edition and it's very, very cheap. Condemn has always been a cheap card. So when people are trying to pimp out their decks, they're going to look for the best version of it. And the best version is the full art. There's just so many printings of it. It's hard to find a the original foil dissension version will be still probably the highest foil version. But if you don't have that one, because again, it's owed, you can pick one of these up easier. And that's why this is $12 is because people like to have the pimpest version for their deck. Death Shadow is a deck I've seen pimped. Some decks are not pimped like Storm. I just don't see it ever pimped. Uh, goblins mono red like the whole point is your budget but for the most expensive tier one deck yes people are going to want this version of condemn to play or to play against that deck i guess would be so hmm, yeah it's interesting i'm maybe it's actually not in the death shadow list it's probably in the well against in the mirror ma match it's probably okay so anyway, that is it for Condemn. It's the highest version of a card played against a tier one deck. Now we have the last remaining one. So as you know, most of these have gone up in price and it only took a long time for this to finally spike in price. So you might ask, what does it actually do? I don't actually know. I'm going to um, read you the card because I'm curious of what actually it does as well. So it is a arcane X double white. You may remove a white card or converted man cost X in your hand from the game rather than paying for it. The next X damage that a source of your turn would deal to you or a creature you control this turn, it 
is dealt to target creature or player instead. It's probably tech against Death Shadow. If I had to guess, it is technology against Dex Death Shadow. Death Shadow is the big bad tier one deck. So you will see a lot of people brew new cards and this is one of them. So if Death Shadow is attacking you for a massive amount of damage and your opponent is at a very low life anyway, this is a way to just to win the game if you have the X card. Now, the interesting part about this one is it doesn't have to be exact, right? You don't have to do the exact math. You just need the biggest card in your hand and that's going to do well. It will do it will do significant damage because remember Death Shadow, the whole point of Death Shadow is they're losing life by choice. And this one, uh, you are, are a creature, so you can even block to avoid the damage totally. This is dealt to target creature or player instead. Yeah, so it reads incredibly well against Death Shadow. You can block with your creature and then redirect all the damage to your, the, your opponent and then just win the game from there because they're attacking with a huge Death Shadow. And they're already at extremely low levels of life. Now, the next card we're going to look at is what I call the art card. And there are a few of these. Whenever you see Jace, so the counter spell in Jace vs. Chandra, I didn't know this. I was with my friend in Richmond, Virginia. I was doing an internship at a patent boutique law firm. And my friend was a reporter on the news. So... He told me that he had a stack of these, and at first I didn't really understand why the Jace Counterspell was so expensive or why he was telling me this. I was like, okay, who cares? Counterspell is a dollar. At that time, the Jace Counterspell was 10 to $15 because it has Jace. It was the alternative art Jace, and that's why I found about the Lily Demonic Tutor as well. Now, you might ask, Arcane Denial is a $0.57 cents from the original set, Alliance. It is three dollars and twenty nine cents from Commander two thousand thirteen. Why is the two thousand and sixteen one more expensive when it is the newest one? So it has good artwork, and that can control the price of a card. Not always, but sometimes, and sometimes it's enough. So that was the first time w with my friend seeing talking about Jace and why this Jace is so much more valuable than other counter spells. It's because of the artwork, and now I can. That I don't. I don't know. And for a lot of you, that kind of sounds silly, but it was like a realization that yes, it is a collector's game, and yes, people put even if the cards do exactly the same, people will want to buy the one with better artwork. So artwork does affect price, and we see that all the time with reprints. Some people always believe the original artwork is better. Some people don't. I mean, we have Snapcaster Mage with different artwork. I believe the original is better, but some people don't. But if the large majority do b believe the original is better, it will have a higher price point. And let's talk about Shadowmoor. If you have boxes of Shadowmoor on commons or commons, or if your store has them, just buy them all. If you can buy them for like, you know, five cents, 10 cents, just buy all the on commons with minus one, minus one on card and just hold out because they are all spiking in price this is shadow more again we have blowfly infestation which is uncommon it's four dollars now from the 21 cents it used to be that's not bad that's what a two thousand percent increase in price but this is not the only one there are going to be future ones and in the past there's been devoted droid which i love because it allows me to it makes malaria a little bit better the deck i love to play uh now that there's a new amaket and luckily the amaket card is uncommon if they made it mythic then that card would be really expensive but that's for another time so anything with that has any ef effect with minus one mi minus one minus one will probably be in the shadow more set and in that set people haven't really caught on to most of the cards it's an interesting set Quick Spike or Quill, that Quill dude uh, has spiked already. Devoted Druid has spiked already. This one has spiked already. And then there was another one uh, that destroys creatures with minus one, minus one counters on it. If Hour of Devastation continues the minus one, minus one counter theme, 
expect these prices to go up even more. But in the meantime, expect cards in Shadowmoor just as a general basis to have the ability to go up way more than they had had previously to Amaket being released. So let's talk about powerful mechanics. Now, Phyrexian Manor is considered one of the most powerful mechanics, yes, and to the point that they banned Gitaxin Probe, even already restricted it, even in Vintage. That's how good that card is, right? That's mental misstep good, another Phyrexian Manor. Well, the next best mechanic, it's not, it's, you do have to pay mana for it, but it's very little, is the suspend mechanics. I've always felt that suspend was very, very good. And all the cards restore balance, ancestral visions, all living and uh, hypergenesis, unfortunately, is banned in modern, but all of them are incredibly powerful mechanics. And what happens, just like with the packs or any powerful mechanic, Force of Will, I, I still have a good feeling about the other four ones that followed Force of Will as being okay cards. I mean, the problem is they're in Legacy. If they were reprinted in Modern, I think some of them would be playable, especially Bounty of the Hunt and maybe an Infect type of build. So that's what you look at. If you look at a mechanic and you notice one of the cards is really expensive and the other four have the same mechanic and maybe a little weaker, maybe a lot weaker, eventually all four will spike. All five of them will spike in price, assuming that they are not banned. That is what happened with Suspend. That is what happened with Pack. Even Pack of the Titan, which is the worst one of the bunch, went up a ton in price. So if you believe in a mechanic and you can pinpoint one card with that mechanic being very strong, it is likely that in the lifetime, let's say in the next 10 years, the other four cards will go up in price. Which brings me to the only Amaket card in this list, but luckily we have one. Cut and Ribbons. I play this in Magic Duels. It is OP. It's very good. So let me talk about Cut, for instance. It is one in a red. It is sorcery speed, but it's four damage. It pretty much destroys anything, even dragons. Even Glorybringer will not escape this. If they do not exert the Glorybringer, you just kill it. And it's like, okay, you attacked me, and maybe I blocked. Now, the aftermath portion is extremely interesting because if you are the red deck aggro, and yes, you do need double black for this, but with the dual lands that we have right now, it's okay. You just need a finisher. And typically, instead of relying on maybe a big dragon with haste, you can rely on this from your graveyard at no card disadvantage. One of the... One of the weaknesses of burn is you run out of cards and you run out of gas that's not true of this card this card will allow you to deal with a very very strong creature from your opponent giving hence giving you more time to draw more cards to lightning bolt your opponent to the face some more or to lightning i guess shock your opponent to the face some more and play those little creatures but the aftermath effect is really really good it just finishes the game from nowhere I just go, boom, dead. Okay, cool. And that's your finisher is something that provided value, like really good value already. The four damage for two sorcery speed, I think is good good enough in the current meta. But then the finisher mechanism where you don't need to rely on a creature and be subject to creature removal or combat tricks, you just finish them from your grave. Uh, and that's really good for tempo. It really is a two-for-one card in the right deck. And that right deck has Glorybringer in it as well. So that's it, guys. Let me know if I missed any cards that you want me to go over. Uh, leave me a comment below. Talk to you guys later.